There we go. Okay, so the Hunter's a free-to-play game. Um, there's a few benefits if you decide you want to, you do want to start, and you're a new player. Here's the coupon code that I have. That will get you some free shit. So that will get you a moose call and a rangefinder, which if I was to show you in the store, um, the rangefinder is the way EMs work is their dollars. So that's two dollars and fifty cents. So you get this, and then you would get a moose call, <clears throat> which is two bucks. You get two hundred. I believe you get 200 EMs, which is another $2, so that's 6 bucks. And then you get some, uh, let's see, do they have scent reducers in here? It's under consumables. Yeah, there you go. Um, they have scent eliminator, which is $1.50, so it's almost $10 worth of stuff if you use that code and you sign up for a new account. So to kind of explain how the Hunter works, and we'll go back to the launcher. So the Hunter is a free-to-play game, but the way it kind of works is... In order to be free to play, they rotate the free to play species every week. Um, or I shouldn't say every week, every so often. Sometimes it's a week, sometimes it's two weeks, sometimes it's three weeks. So you can hunt certain maps and certain species being free to play. So I'll kind of show you what you get um, as a guest. So as a guest, you can hunt whitetail, European rabbit pheasant and then the two different species they do rotate every week so there you go and you have access to go everywhere now the things you don't see here are unlimited ammo you can't host multiplayer games but you can join them um trophy shot that doesn't matter none of that shit matters so that's if you're free to play now being free to play means that you only get access to a few guns which we'll go over in a minute now, if you decide to get a basic membership, um, what you notice is these are all the same. Whether you get 3, 6, or 12 months, or the basic membership, either way, they're the same. What differs are the extra items that you get that are included. So before you decide to pull the trigger on the Hunter, my recommendation is you watch somebody play it, you have a general idea on how to play it, and then you decide what you want to invest on... A bundle so these are the bundles so here's what you get in the bundles so the longer you subscribe this bundle here is 50 bucks just like buying a game off the shelf you get to play for a year and then you get all these additional weapons so this is what's included now the more weapons you have the more species you can hunt that's pretty much the way it works however with shotguns and with bows you probably have the access to the most species when you have shotguns and bows. Um, with some of these other guns, like the basic premise of the Hunter is you can't use like a 300 um, bolt action rifle to kill a rabbit, or you couldn't use a um, you couldn't use that to hunt a pheasant. It has to be somewhat realistic. Now, on the same thing, you can't use a 22 long rifle take out a deer you have to be able to be able to kill the animal or it's not considered um, you won't get any points for it which you'll go into later so in the three month subscription for a starter it's 15 bucks so you get to play for three months so if you figure that's one month if you played world of warcraft one month you can hunt all the animals all the reserves host multiplayer games unlimited basic ammo and then you get these four weapons which are meh they're meh they're not great, but you also get access to a lot of different clothes. So how the clothes work is, clothes give you camouflage, which is important when you're trying to hunt animals that either cover your scent, they cover your sight, or a combination of the two in order so that animals can get closer to you so you can make an easier shot. What they also do is they have a cold rating because there's snow maps on here. You can't go to a snow map wearing your shorts. It doesn't work. So again, it's kind of realistic. So what you also see in here that's included in, in a three-month package is a call. So you get a deer call. That's important. 
most of the species, probably 90% of them, maybe not 90%, probably 80, 80 plus percent of the species need to be called in. And that's the way you get them in is you need to have a call. Some of them are random or you can just track them like the kangaroo, um, the ibex is a poor example, the bison, um, bears, even though you can kind of get bears in with traps and stuff. But anyway, so you get a call, which is important. So you also get binos, which are included really with anything. Um, that mini game doesn't mean shit. Um, you get the Arctic stuff, which allows you to hunt the snow maps. You get a, uh, a piece of glass, a, a scope here, and you get a handgun scope for your revolver, um, a turkey call. So out of here, you get a turkey call and a deer call, and you get some clothes. So that's not a great package. Um, I would not recommend the three-month bundle unless you really are hesitant about getting your feet wet. The best value are between these two, so I'll kind of explain why. So going down the line here, the main reason that this becomes a great value versus the other one is really the compound bow. So a big advantage with the compound bow is that it doesn't scare everything within a 200 meter vicinity essentially. So what happens in the hunter is when you call things in and you shoot them with a gun, it scares everything else away for maybe 10 to 20 minutes, sometimes longer, just depends. So an advantage with the bow is you could have a pack of six deer come in and you can drop them one at a time. As long as you don't miss, but if you hit them with a kill shot, you can kill them over and over and over again as long as you one hit kill them in the heart or in the lungs. If they start to run, you're gonna spook everything. So that's a big advantage with a bow. It also allows you to hunt probably the most species between the bow and the shotgun. What you also notice down here is you get your deer call, you know, you get a lot of the same stuff. And then you go down here, you get a turkey call. But the big thing here are these two items. You get a deployable hunting tower and a tent. So what's a tent? Think of a tent as a teleport. So when you go onto a map, you can set a tent down and then you can spawn there. So some of the maps are huge and can take you 10 to 20 minutes in-game RL to spawn and try and um, uh, really try and walk all over the place. So uh, a tent is a great way to skip all that. And it's kind of the um, something you can buy. I believe they're about five bucks in game currency money, but it's well worth it if you're looking at saving a lot of time to get to a hot spot. So similar to Fishing Planet, there's also hot spots in the Hunter. So. A tent is a great way to save yourself some time and get you to one of those more active spots where you know the animals are going to be. Now, next thing you have here is a deployable hunting tower. Not necessarily the same concept, but kind of similar with a deployable hunting tower. You can set that up. It takes about maybe 24 hours real life for it to go up, and then you get a hunting stand similar to a tree stand. So that's the big difference with the $31.99 package. Then we go to the $50 package. Big advantage here is that you get the 300 Win Mag rifle. This is one of the best guns in the game, and it allows you to hunt the really big species and be able to drop them with one shot. It also gives you pretty long range to take long range shots. So this is great. This is great. It's a great addition. Um, I mean, you get some other stuff, but that's the big one that I'd take away. Then some of the other things you get that go down here is you notice you get the Boone and Crockett jacket, cap, pants, boots. That's one of the best camos you can use for the deer species. Um, you also get an elk call. You get a tree stand, which is kind of similar to the hunting tower. Um, you get a backpack, which is a great upgrade, which is something you need almost immediately. You get a tent, and then you get three towers. Not one, but you actually get three. So when you look at the membership bundles, dollar per dollar, that's a really, really good one. That's really good. So anyway, you know, that's kind of to explain the bundles, which will give you an idea. Not saying you want to buy it right now. You don't necessarily want to do that. But it gives you an idea and kind of what, what we're looking at when it comes to bundles and where to spend your money. My recommendation is don't get into the game unless you're going to get one of these two bundles personally. 
I think that's the best way to enjoy the game. And then you can buy a lot of the other stuff a la carte, which I'll get into. So, um, so I guess, yeah, we'll go into the store now, and then I'll kind of talk about competitions. But before we go into that, there's two types of currency. So here's your currency. You have EMs, which are the gold currency or the premium currency. That's how you buy stuff at the store. So I have 267 EMs right now, which is basically $2.50. Which would mean I could buy, like, let's see, this scope right here is 100 EMs. I could buy one of those. Um, the other thing you have are GMs, which are used for consumables or dog treats or, so I'll show you. So you can buy these for either EMs, 50 cent EMs, or GMs, and you earn these GMs by going through and entering competitions and placing or completing missions. You can com you know, you can take on a ton of missions at once, but the missions tend to give you a lot of things you can do and they're constantly adding them and constantly moving on. So like these are two that just added in the last week cuz I didn't actually take them. So um, like for this one Take a male turkey from under 30 feet and you get 300 GMs. Now you can use those GMs in order to buy things that can help you. So like for your dog, um, you could buy dog treats which help you level the dog. Another thing you can do is get lures like sprays that bring in the animals closer to you or you possibly could get, um, like let's see here. We'll go to equipment. Um, you can get face paint, which will give you camouflage, increase your camouflage level or camping supplies so you can pour it around to your tents on a map. Um, scent eliminators, all that stuff is relevant that comes in the shop that you can get. And that's the currency you can earn in the game. So that kind of explains the in-game currency. Um, moving on, you have your menu here, which obviously this is where you hunt. You can take the tutorial, which is okay. Um, you can buy stuff at the store. Now, and the stuff at the store is where we'll spend a little bit of time here. So you have some things called bundles, which tend to give you really, really good value. And then you have things that are on sale, which rotates typically every week to a couple weeks. Like if you were a new player and this backpack was 250, I'd say that's the first thing you would wanna buy. Why? Because it gives you room to carry more than one gun and some extra calls and some accessories on some of those maps that um, may be either a little bit bigger as far as the amount of species that are available. So if there's six species, you might need to bring four or five different calls to call them in. And then they may be little and big, so maybe you need to bring buckshot, you need to bring birdshot, you need to bring slugs, or you want to bring your arrows so you don't spook them or you want to bring a 300 wind mag because it's a moose or whatever. A backpack is probably the first thing I would buy. And when it comes to, everyone always asks, what's the best weapon, what's the best weapon? So when you go to the weapons, they, there's some misconception on best and what best is. So best essentially for me is best value, which covers the most species which would be your shotgun, which you're gonna get, which covers a ton of fucking species, so you don't have to worry about that. And the next ones are probably the bows. Not only are they really quiet, but they allow you to take a lot of different species all at once. So most of the bows allow you to hunt almost everything in the game, like turkeys you can shoot with a bow. You can also shoot a bison with it. Not that you're gonna kill it, unless you hit it right in the heart, maybe you'll kill it, but you guys kind of know what I mean. So um, kind of the, the general school of thought of the best bow in the game currently is probably the Pulsar. Um, it's really quiet and still pretty powerful. However, the sight's a little more complex to use. So if you were to go back to the bows, um, looking at the snake bite, probably one of the most affordable, it's on sale right now, but does not have a great sight either. So if you look at the Parker, this actually has a rangefinder sight, which is by far the best sight for a bow. What happens with this is it lights up at a distance so you know what pin to, to use when you're aiming at your target. 
So because of that, it kind of allows you to really know where you need to shoot. So for newer players, this is probably one of the best bows. If you're a little more experienced, you know how to use a bow, the Pulsar is probably the best bow. So that, in my opinion, is one of the best guns. Or, yeah, weapons, I guess, overall. Now, when it comes to, to the rifles in general, um, you have a lot of people who will, who will say different things. But if you think about what you want to hunt, um, if you get the six-month bundle, you're going to be provided with guns or 12-month that almost can hunt everything. What I typically would recommend to newer players is that you consider buying either the 7mm Magnum Bull Pup. And the reason that this is great is because it's a semi-automatic, so sometimes you can shoot two or three animals. Um, and it has the 12 power scope. So this uses this scope, which is the 12 power scope, which is currently the one that zooms in the most in the game. Um, so that one's pretty good. But the other one that I think is really solid is the 300 Win Mag. So let me find that. Dun, 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 dun. And I guess we'll just use this one. Um, it's the carbon one. So this one can only use the 3x9 scope. But this will, or the 2 to 10, I guess, is another one. So you can get into about a 10 power scope on this rifle, which is good. And it's it's really, really solid. So if you get the 12-month package, this comes with it. It's a different color, but it does come with it. So that's a great value if you are going to buy weapons. So you can see kind of that you're looking, you look separately. This is 6 bucks, but maybe it'll be on sale. You don't have to buy it right away. This one's 650 So... Oh, here's the, here's the composite one I was looking for. So this is the one I have. It doesn't matter. They're just different colors. So those are kind of the weapons that everybody asks for. Don't worry about a handgun. The shotguns you're going to get in one of the bundles. Um, the ammo that you guys get, if you buy the subscription, your ammo replenishes. If you don't, I do believe you have to come in and buy this with GMs, depending on the type that you want to buy. But you get three boxes of ammo that are basically unlimited that you can bring three boxes per hunt, pretty much. Um, so then you have your optics that you can buy to make it a little bit easier. You have dogs, which we'll go into a little bit later. And then, of course, you have your lures. So this is really the most important thing before you even buy a weapon that I'd say you'd want to get, which is the calls. Depending on what species you want to hunt, most of them have a call, like here's for deer or for ducks, which are, ducks and geese are a little more complex. We won't go into that right now, but um, if you wanna call moose, you need to get these. If you wanna call elk, you need to get this, turkey box collar. So in your bundle, you'll get some calls, but if you wanna hunt something else, you usually wanna have the call for it. So uh, sometimes in the bundles, they have what's called the crazy collar pack, and I don't see that now. Mm. Here it is, the Crazy Collar Bundle. This is probably the must-buy for the hunter if you decide you want to do it. So if you're going to get into the game and you're going to buy a bundle, you're looking at an additional $12.92, and then you can pretty much call every animal in the game outside of mallards and outside of geese. And you're going to say, well, damn, why the fuck doesn't it come with that? Well, I'll tell you. The mallards and the geese, you need to set up with decoys and blinds. It's a much more expensive package. Just make one of your friends do it. That's what I do with Nikki. Um, Nikki has a setup where he can call in the ducks and the geese, and you can spend, what is it, like a buck? Yeah, so like a, the goose flag lure is $1.75. The goose short range collar is $1.75. The long range collar is $1.75. So you can kind of team up with geese and mallards. Um, there's a long range mallard, short range mallard. So um, mallards and geese are on their own kind of thing, but the crazy collar bundle is definitely what you want to buy when you start. So now we know that if we get into the game, the more we pay for up front, the more crap we get for sure. And a lot of it can be a really great value. And the less we pay for it, the more we'll have to buy a la carte. But if you look um, at 
a crazy color bundle. This is almost a non-negotiable, in my opinion, to, to enjoy the game even more. You save about three bucks to buy it this way. Now, you can buy these all individually, but you're going to run into a map where you're going to need one of these one way or another. Um, so, that kind of explains how the crazy collar bundle works. Um, we won't get into dogs yet, but let's talk about clothing. So, you're going to get some clothing when you start, but it's not going to be great. So, the clothing's going to be enough to get you to walk around... And if you don't act like too much of an asshole or you're not stomping around like an ankylosaurus in the woods, you're going to be able to, to kind of get by with the basic clothing, depending on the species you're hunting. Certain species like turkey have like Superman vision. They're, they're like hawks. They see really great. Then you have moose that are dumb as shit, and you could damn near grab their tail or poke them in the butt, and they aren't going to see you. So it depends on the species you're hunting. But... Each type of these clothing have pluses and minuses. So everyone goes, oh my god, a ghillie suit, this is awesome. Well, the problem with the ghillie suit, as you can see here, is if you aren't sitting still, you add a moderate amount of extra noise. So each piece of clothing is really good at one thing or another, if you buy it, typically. And some things are really, are not so good. So they all have pluses or minuses. So let's say we go to a bundle and let's just look... Um, so the Sneaky 3D Summer Field, this is a pretty good bundle, but if your map is not summer, you don't get a lot of the benefits of this, and it actually can be bad. Like, let's say you're on a fall map and you're wearing this, you stick out like an asshole. So, because you kind of are walking around the map like a jerk, everyone can see you that's an animal, and maybe not everyone, a moose probably is still dumb as shit, you can walk in on that, but the vast majority of animals are going to be able to see you a little bit easier. So, depending on the map that you're going to, the clothing can truly impact, ready or not, here I come, like the game of hide and seek you're trying to play with the animals. Some of them have scent reduction, some of them have sight reduction, some of them have sound reduction, they could have a combination of all three, they could do um, one or the other better than them, but you guys are probably all like, damn, just tell me which one to fucking buy. So, all right, the, the ones that are considered overall some of the better ones are the Boone and Crockett set now this is great for everything for deer okay if you want to hunt species of deer um, like elk deer moose it's really really good for that now if you wanted to hunt like let's see this the dock collection is actually pretty good for deer as well this is another pretty good one um it kind of looks like 1980s england but or 1880s england <laughs> like sherlock holmes if he went out for a hunt you'd be wearing this but um it, those are are two of the ones that are known to be pretty good now they're really catered around each species so depending on which map here's the other dock one um depending on which map you're going to you probably want to consider the Summer 3D Field. So let me find that. Sneaky 3D Summer Field. This is a great collection. Um, in open field areas during the summer. Have you noticed that? So Whiteheart, Loggers Point, Settlers Creek, and the low fields of this place, which I won't pronunciate because I would murder it. So maybe three, possibly four, almost half the maps. So then you have another where S Sneaky 3D Alpine Summer, but this is only good on one map. So if you read the description, you kind of know what maps are going to be pretty good for certain types of camo. Like this is the fall map, and it's great at Hirschfelden. Nowhere else, if you notice. So then you should have, we should have another, um, dun, 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 dun. Summer Forest. Here's another one. So Whiteheart, Loggers Point, Sellers Creek, Red Feather. So this is really good for any forest map. Um, so my recommendations would be you'd want to, just depending on what you want to hunt and what species are where, consider those first. The Ghillie Jacket. I, I wouldn't screw around with that. I, I wouldn't. There's fall and there's summer. 
when you're a new player, it's just not the right thing for you. Then you have these Arctic jackets, which are great on the snow map. But if you're probably not going to play on the snow map yet, you can just own this this homeless person's um, hunting for um, working on the snow map. You stick out a little bit like an asshole, but not too bad. You can still hunt some stuff. And it's free. It comes in the bundles. So that kind of covers clothing. So from clothing, we'll talk a little bit about upgrades. The upgrade you want to buy, probably one of the first things you want to get, is the backpack. So the backpack right now is on sale, non-negotiable, go out and buy it. Moving on. Pouches and holsters, don't worry about these. You don't need those yet. Um, ignore services, don't buy the avatars. Um, when it comes to equipment, these things can be beneficial. So if you use my link and you sign up for a new account, um, you will see this. Whoops, I had to post it twice. Sorry, guys. Um, you get this rangefinder for free. What's great about the rangefinder is that when you have a rangefinder and you're using a bow, you have a general idea on how far out something is. Sometimes there are certain contests or missions that require you to have something either certain distance close, certain distance far, or when you're using a bow, you just need to know the distance so you know where you need to aim if you aren't using that rangefinder scope we talked about earlier. So what you'd consider buying out of here would be one of the range finders eventually. You're going to get the binos for free in a bundle, though. So you, this isn't a must-buy. You can consider this for later on. Um, ignore the HunterMate apps. The consumables, you really don't need yet, so I'm going to tell you to ignore those. The deployables, this is great. If you get the 6- or 12-month bundle, it's not available in the 3-month bundle. So this is really good. You can set up your tower wherever you want. Animals walk around it. They can't really see you in there. So they'll come right up to it so that you have a shot within a few feet. Um, ignore this, hunting horn. Don't buy that. Don't be an idiot. Okay, so then you go to large equipment. So these are tree stands and blinds. Again, this is a little more advanced. I wouldn't say that you guys need to even consider these until you have a grasp on the game. So we're going to skip over this. This isn't really for beginners. Um, these are the blinds like for hunting geese, for hunting ducks. And then later on, ground blinds make it a little easier to hunt turkeys or maybe coyotes or things that are very visual. Um, all right, so then we go to tents. So like we talked about before, tents are, they're about five bucks. And if you ever have a tent that's on sale, it's always a typical good value to give you a teleport location so that you can start closer to your hunting spots than spawning at a lodge and having to walk. Because that can take a long time. And the more you walk, the more chance you have to spook an animal. So tents are a great way to go there quickly. Now you can spawn in at a tent for free, but if you wanted to teleport to a tent, you would need to get camping supplies, which most bundles come, come with, um, and it allows you to kind of teleport between one tent to another. You can always teleport to the lodge, but you can't always teleport to a tent. That costs you camping supplies. You can spawn in at a tent, you can't teleport to one. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, moving on. Um, bait sites. These are awesome, but again, they're a little more advanced. So I have a couple videos on my YouTube channel that show some really good spots if you want to use these to try and kill some pigs or try and kill some bears. But for now, I'm going to skip them because for new players, they're not necessarily relevant. Um, licenses, you don't need to worry about as long as you have a subscription. If you don't, you need to buy them with GMs. That's what I'd recommend, not EMs. Then the event items, we're going to completely disregard because... This doesn't apply to anything we're talking about. So to recap some of the highlights, look for sales and buy in bundles when you can, when you're looking for something. If you can hold off on buying that gun that you really, really want, maybe it'll end up on sale. You never know. Um, so I would say that for certain things, you don't need to buy them right away. Just wait. That's why I really like the economy in the game. Like this weapon might be on sale next week. You never know. Typically, the week after you buy something full price, it goes on sale. You know, that RNG. Um, okay, so that kind of covers the shop, which is really important. And then um, I kind of covered the missions a little bit. We won't go into the hunt yet, but let's talk a little bit about competitions. So competitions are a way you can actually earn the premium currency. And most of the competitions that you see, let's just pick Damp's favorite species. We'll go to Coyote. So Coyote has a bunch of different competitions that you see here. The Summer Fiesta is a little unique, so I won't go into that. We're going to ignore it. 
because it's just a seasonal event. These are typical events. You usually have um, harvest the, the highest single coyote, and then what, <clears throat> what you'll notice here is that if you have 50 coyote har harvest max, you can go in this one. So it breaks it down by, are you a new player? Are you advanced? Or are you really experienced? So it gives you more of a chance to, to really compete in place. So most of the competitions are gonna be single player, excluding the ones that are multi-species, which come up here that you can play with your friends. Um, most of your contests, you, if you wanna enter in the competition, double check the dates, because a lot of times you'll enter in a contest and it starts tomorrow or two days from now, or it might be almost over. So double check your dates, but generally speaking, um, looking at the competitions, almost all of them are single player, very few of them are going to be multiplayer. Like here's the Red Fox one, they're all single player. So in order to place in these competitions, um, in order to place in them, you'd have to make sure that you were doing a single player game. Multiplayer wouldn't help you. So what you'll notice is prizes that are in here. You get a trophy, which um, I'll kind of show you. This is my trophy that I got for a non-typical whitetail. Um, uh, in February. Don't have a ton of them as you can tell and my hunter score is really low which we'll go into in a minute. But competitions are pretty cool. They give you a different thing to do throughout the game and allow you to kind of be flexible with what's going on in the game. You can change species pretty easily. You can enter as many of these as you want and it doesn't matter. When they expire it doesn't really like affect you at all and it'll tell you if you place well. So those are competitions in a nutshell. Leaderboards are just that. Just like in Fishing Planet, they have leaderboards that um, break the animal down by score. And um, <clears throat> these kind of go down and uh, break out how high a score. And it's it's actually just like Fishing Planet. So then you have Hall of Fame. In each season, there's a Hall of Fame for who got the biggest one. Pretty cool. Um, so anyway, moving on to missions. Missions are like the single player way of earning, the best way to earn GMs. So grab all these. Like you can see, I don't have any available. Grab all of them because you'll find yourself, your, yourself will do them accidentally without even trying. So grab all these that you can and you'll accidentally do them. But like this one, harvest a white-tailed deer buck with a weight of at least 68 kilograms, 150 pounds. You get 400 GMs when you do it. So you don't have to go through here and go, oh my God, I got to get these missions done. You're going to do most of them by accident. Just go into the game, have fun, and eventually you'll get some of these done. Now, if you want to go through and focus on them, you can. But, I mean, I'd hardly ever look at this number for the GM. So that's really all they're good for. Um, but you can reset those in the store by going to here. So for 800 EMs, you can reset your missions so you can earn more GMs. That's just something that's there. Now, the big thing that everybody typically asks about is your hunter score. So, if you look on here, Damp is like in last place with 171, a really shitty score. But, I really don't focus on trying to drive up my hunter score. I just go in and play, because it's fun. So, how do you drive up your hunter score? Well, the way you drive up your hunter score is here. So, um, how many animals you harvest. So, right now, currently, I've hunted... Um, 507 animals, and once I get to 1,000, I get an additional 15 hunter score. I have hunted, let's see, probably the most is probably geese. So um, I've got 100 geese, which gave me a 500 score once I got that. When I get to 250, I'm gonna actually at 131. When I get to 250, I get an additional 10 points. Hunter score doesn't do anything as far as unlocking anything. It's just kind of a way to be an achievement and kind of show you where you go from there. So you get points for, um, you get hunter score points for weapons. So the more times you get kills with weapons, the better it is. The more kills you get with an animal, the better it is, the more it will, has a chance to go up. But you also have skills that are increased. So every time you spot an animal, your skills increase. So you can see they're spotting and tracking. So every time you track and or spot an animal, your skill has a chance to go up a little bit, and then it will level. The more you spot and or track an animal, the more you'll know how many points it gets um, and how many, I guess I'd say, like how many points it'll get if it's a male or female is, is always given 
and how valuable it is to shoot. So if you have a higher hunter score than your buddy and you're doing a multiplayer game, you're like, eh, why don't you shoot this one? And then he bust his balls because he shot something that was small. Whereas you knew that it was going to be a bigger one because you had more experience when it comes to tracking and spotting. So the more you shoot an animal or spot them, the more these go up. So for me, my hogs are really high because every time at my hog bait, or my hog feeder, I can spot like 10 at once. So it goes up, you know, really, really high in comparison to every other animal I've hunted. So, so anyway, that's kind of the skills and how they work. And your weapons are kind of the same way. The more you get kills with weapons, the, the more your weapon sway reduces, making it easier to get an accurate shot. So for me, the 300 is probably one of my best ones. Maybe the Parker, um... Yeah, the Parker's a four. That's that's not bad for me. Um, so yeah, so that's how you use skills. Now you also have dogs. So in in coming to dogs, let me go back and actually look at the shop. But dogs also have skills. The more you use them for certain things, the more they can level up. Um, the higher the level they are, the smarter they are. The more they they respond to your commands. The more that they respond to you telling them to go and pick up this animal. You have retrievers, which go out and get, like, I believe they get rabbits, they get geese, they get birds. Basically any bird species, mallards, all that stuff, pintails. Um, they'll go out and they'll fetch them for you. Um, doesn't really do a whole lot for you, but this male scent hound does. Like, or the scent hound, I should say, male or female. Either way, it does. Because if you shoot an animal and you bleed it, those teeth are terrifying, by the way. They just look terrifying. Um, the more that you need help tracking an animal, the more that your scent hound can do for you. So let's say you shoot a deer and you hit it in the guts and you're like, oh, fuck me, I'm going to be chasing this for 30 minutes. You probably would, but as long as it's dead, your scent hound should be able to track it all the way to it. Now, if it isn't dead, he's not going to be able to respond to that and be able to track it the whole way. So that's kind of a brief overview of how it works, but... Um, this one's probably more worth buying than the Retriever, but they're both pretty cool to play around with. I like them. I think they're a good addition to the game. They just need to add German Shepherd dogs, but they haven't, which is disappointing. So that's an overview on everything that goes on with the actual game and the menu system. Twinkie brings up a good point where he says that when you uh, get a 600 Hunter score, you can actually unlock the pouch to bring a revolver with you on a hunt. And it doesn't take up like your backpack space or whatever. Uh, personally, I don't know that that's as valuable as what I think when I look at it. I'm like, oh, I wish I had that sometimes, but not that often. Because again, most of the time I try and use a bow so I don't spook everything in its sister. So with that, that's an overview of the game itself, guys. How the store works, kind of how the economy works, and a breakdown on all that stuff.